Greetings once again, AP Calc AB students. We're going to take a look at example two from our topic 6.14. We're comparing some integration techniques. If you tuned in to example one, you probably saw this wonderful example that covered these three particular very strikingly similar integrals. Now for example two, we have three other strikingly similar integrals that just have a bit of a different take on them. So if we take a look at 2 part A. This one's going to be a little bit tricky because we don't deal with this integration formula very much, but if you look back into your notes, if you've studied with me and recall from, I think, our discussion earlier from topic 6.9 with U substitution integration, this is the arc secant form. There's nothing that you have to do to it. You just recognize it as such. You have to identify the fact that your a in this problem is going to be 1, which is pretty easy to work with, and the fact that your u is equal to x in this particular case. So the only thing left to do is write the answer. 1 over a in front is just a 1. And then we have our arc secant. About the only thing that's a little tricky to this is you got to spell arc secant right, or secant with a negative 1 superscript. But by definition, you would say the absolute value of your u divided by your a, which is 1. And so that absolute value is really important here. It has to do with the domain restriction that exists between the original function, where x could really be negative and it would be OK, but x cannot be negative in this arc secant. Let's take a look at part b. Part b, with the x in the numerator, opens the door very wide for you to be able to take your u as the entire contents of the square root. That means our derivative is going to be a 2. We swing our dx over. We're not real happy about that 2. We wish it wasn't there. So we can easily remedy that by putting a 1 half out in front. And at this point, this x dx that's up here, whoops, I probably need to recap what I'm doing here. <laughs> Sorry. Let's rewind here just a bit. I apologize. Let's let u be x squared minus 1. Now we're really starting part b. I got kind of mixed up starting to take my derivative a little too soon. Now the derivative is 2 times x dx. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense with you, okay? So what we have the luxury of doing is saying that this x dx is really going to be able to be replaced with my du as long as I do something about that 2. And if I just simply divide it over, I'm in good shape. So basically, we're just integrating 1 over the square root of u du, which is another way to say integrate u to the negative half power. How's that with respect to u? All right, so we have this half in front. We integrate u to the negative half. That gives us u to the positive half divided by a half or times 2 plus the c. And then we can finish this up by simply canceling our 2s and then back substituting. And interestingly enough, we have an x squared minus 1 as our answer with our plus c. And that's all that you have to do with this one. And it's very amazing how the presence of that x and that numerator completely changed not only the approach to integrate, but the final answer looks drastically different as well. Now, if you take a look at part c, I don't want you having to scratch your head too much on this one, because I am going to tell you there is no known method from calc ab that will integrate part c. Now, notice what I said. I didn't say it cannot be integrated. I said it cannot be integrated using calculus AB techniques. I'll just stop there at calculus AB. In my BC course next year, we're going to talk about ways that you will be able to integrate something like this. It actually goes a little bit above and beyond what's really tested on the BC exam, and it's really a kind of a true depiction of what you might see in a Calculus 2 course. So we have that to look forward to. 
Anyway, I hope this helps you just get a little bit better at your integration techniques. One more video in this series about comparing three similar integrals coming up, and it's going to address how to deal with these natural log type of integrals. So be sure to check those out. We'll see you next time.